Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And it's another Board Game Upgrades video. This is a monthly series I do. Well, monthly, surprisingly enough, where I go over various board games, the ways I've upgraded them, deluxified them, inserts, metal coins, deluxified pieces, resources, all those kinds of things. This particular series is sponsored by Top Shelf Gamer. For context, sponsored means they send me stuff to show in the various videos as well as the fact that I do get a commission referral link to anything you buy. So there will be a link in the description down below. If you use that link, I do get commission. And also, there's usually a discount code as well for like a week or two after I do this series. I'll have the specific details in the description down below, but if you want to get a bit of a discount on upgrades, tokens, realistic resources, inserts, coins, all those usual things, they're available over at Top Shelf Gamer. But... With that, let's go ahead and go into this. As usual, what I do is I pick a few games. Sometimes I've gone through some of these games before, like Le Havre. I've shown some of the upgrades I have here already, but when I add new things, I like to show off where I'm at with a particular game, and so I'll do that. And Le Havre, for context, is one of my favorite Uwe Rosenberg games, possibly my favorite. I want to say it's my favorite Uwe game. I haven't played it in far too long, and my most recent addition to what I've done here is an insert from Folded Space Insert. Now, you can obviously buy these at Folded Space. This particular one is from Top Shelf Gamer. They carry that line. They carry, they're kind of a hodgepodge of carrying a bunch of different options you can get your hands on, as well as their own line of realistic resources. Now, I have a few things going on in Laha. First of all, I really need to sleeve my cards. It's an absolute shame that I haven't yet. Uh, this, these are, well, the cards, but I haven't, haven't sleeved them yet, which is a shame, because I generally sleeve things that I like. But this is the fold to space insert. I'll show you the basic setup we have here and how I'm managing things, which is also helpful from a stance of very often I have the very definition of first world problems. What do you do when you get a insert designed to work with the base game, but you also have deluxified tokens and now those don't really go together or pair up. So the way this works is the two things I have going on here and I need to upgrade the coins. I need to get coins to upgrade my copy of Lahav because I think that will take it to the next level. But overall, my copy of Lahav has, Lahav has, uh, the, has the folded space insert, which makes setup much quicker, much more accessible. But it also has these tokens over here, which I will attempt to, I don't really want to pour these out that much, but let's go ahead and do it. These over here are acrylic tokens that are replacing what they normally have in the game. So let's go ahead and show you these. I'll have to put them back in in a second, but these are these tokens over here. Those are much more nicer, much more nicer, much nicer tokens. I believe those are from the Board Game Geek Store. I'm sure you can get them from a few places. And for context, those tokens are replacing these. So we have these over here. I'll show you on the top cam. But these are the tokens they're replacing. We have these nice little acrylic bait light pieces versus these little cardboard chits over here. And I do have everything from the original game still stored in my insert because it kind of fits. The way the insert's designed is you have multiple card trays over here for fold the space, all showing you different places you can put the cards. I didn't need to use one of the card trays, so I kind of jammed all the old, old tokens there in case I ever need them. I don't imagine I will, but they are there if I need them. Additionally, this particular fold the space insert has this extra knob over here, this extra, not knob, this kind of carton, which is just used to fill up the space. So usually this goes on its upside down in here to fill up the space. I've been using it to store all these extra tokens because these various trays, we have all these trays over here, just showing you the various resources and whatnot, and all of them are meant to store the various resources, but they don't have enough room when you take the resource chips and make them three times the size. So that's the problem I have over here, which I've solved by putting all the extras in here. I haven't needed them yet, but if you are playing, I, I particularly play Lahav at two and three players. If you're playing at a higher player count, you might actually need to use all these. I haven't needed to yet, so I just keep these over here so I still have them, and then put the rest in these containers. So I basically have card trays. We have these two containers over here, which have our... That's always fun. We have our first player markers and our tokens over there, which I'll put down back in these trays. But So you have first player markers. You have the food tokens from the things. Player markers, not first player markers. You have the, the food tokens that, uh, that show you the harvest spaces, what the boats need, all of that. Various boat tokens spread into two compartments. Then we have the various card trays. And then we have just tons of little resource options. And again, the nice part about these, these tokens, these folded space inserts, I don't know how firm they are as far as storing the box on the side. That's the one thing you want to be mindful of, in my opinion. I'm not willing to take the gamble that the way I have these sorted, that I want to store them on the side. For right now, I'm going to keep them stored flat on the shelf, which I have my system. I'm messing this up. This insert goes here. This insert goes here. Yeah, so everything's going to be relative. The one downside is because of the way I do these over here, I kind of want to have them all stacked nicely and neatly 
in this tray, so on their side, which does add a little bit to the put away or set up time, all of that, but it does leave them looking nice and neat and pristine when you set this up on the table. I do specifically make sure to leave just enough room that you can kind of put your fingers in there and grab one out as needed. So we have this over here, like so, I can just reach in and just take one out as needed and then slide that over there. And that's my folded space insert with geek up bits from Board Game Geek. That's what I have over here. Let's go ahead and put this down over here, back in. And that is Lahav. Now, I again, I do want to get metal coins for it. I forgot to grab them beforehand. I thought I had metal coins for some reason, but I don't. From there, let's move to Istanbul, which is mostly going to be the same thing. We have metal coins. I can't remember if I put up resources in there. Let's go ahead and take a look. We have a folded space insert that, again, this is going to be Istanbul with all the expansions. Now, Istanbul is one of those interesting ones where there is a big box version of Istanbul available. So if you want to get that, you can get your hands on that. I haven't felt the need to do that because it's a bigger box and I can fit everything that fits in the big box in this box with the folded space insert. So why upgrade to a bigger box if I don't need to? It's not, doesn't seem right, but we have these various token trays as, as, as before. So we have some cards, we have some cards, we have these over here, which give you those. We have the metal coins here. So I'll take those out and show you some metal coins. Let me just take everything out over here. So. Let's take this out here. I'm always worried with metal coins and these inserts because the way it works with folded space inserts is you can, look at that, that's why I'm worried. This isn't a firm glue right there. So I'm gonna take a look at that and glue that in. Let's put these coins out. So in general, folded space inserts, I use a standard PVA glue. I grabbed a little container with a good insert. I don't know which one this was. I know I started, so this one might be one of the ones I did first because when I was assembling these, this. I, the past batch of inserts I assembled, I tried using a glue stick to see if it would work because it would make the, the actual process a lot faster. It didn't provide enough stick that I did the first five or six and then they worked a little bit, but they had that loose tension like this where this is coming out a bit. And so I stopped using the glue stick and switched back to PVA glue. So if in case you want to learn, you can learn on my time. Glue sticks are okay for inserts, not great. The big thing is inserts on their own, these PVA inserts, these uh, folded space inserts, you don't even really need to use glue at all in theory you could just dry assemble them and if you're careful enough and pick them up you're fine i don't want to be careful enough if i have to be super careful and precise with everything i'm doing it defeats the purpose but here are some of the coins i have for for this game i these are from top shelf gamer i'm 99 percent sure i'm pretty sure these are from top, yeah these are from top shelf gamer uh and i may have shown them in the past i don't remember i may have shown these trickle coins they're just metal coins to replace the ones you have in well your cardboard ones. I think I did show them. I did show them. I remember throwing them across the room in a prior video. That's what happened there. But yeah, the, the, that's what these are. These are metal coins to replace those. They work nicely. And let's put those over there. So I have metal coins. I don't have any upgraded tokens or whatnot. It doesn't really need it. Uh, I mean, they have basically these, these wooden pieces. They have other, what else do we have? We have gems. We have the little gems. I believe they had, at Top Shelf Gamer, they have options to like upgrade your gems. But like, I don't really know what you would upgrade for for these. You could make them nicer upgraded gems, but these are already your basic gem. I guess you can make them heftier or something. I don't know. There's, there's always a limit to how far I'm willing to go with any particular products. So let's go ahead and put this back. Actually, I think I'm going to change the order. I'll put the less heavy one on bottom, the heavier one on top, so it's an easier pull out there. Again, that's one of the things you want to be mindful of. With glue, it can hold metal coins just fine, but again, it's... Inserts are designed for the base game, but then you upgrade the base game. You're left with all that. We have all these stuck in here. I could just pull this out as well, but let's see. You have to take the other one out first. You have to be mindful of the order of this. But then you can take all these out. This has all these tiles, which can go back in there. The other side has the various player boards. More stuff there that you can take out. And we'll put this back over here like so. That is Istanbul. Fold the space insert, making again it all accessible. This is full. This is Istanbul with the Boca and Bakshis, Boca and Bakshis expansion and the letters and seals. For context, Istanbul is a really solid game. Really enjoyed this one. I find that Istanbul on its own base game Istanbul I enjoy without loving. Versus with the Mocha and Bakshis expansion, I really really enjoy it, and I haven't played Letters and Seals yet, so I still need to table that. I feel like it can only add to the experience. Worst case scenario, it doesn't, and I just get rid of it. I'm okay with that, but really, Istanbul for me shines with the Mocha and Bakshish expansion. So yeah, that we have uh, Fold, we have Lahav, we have Istanbul, both with, uh, well, upgraded resources for Lahav, upgraded coins for Istanbul, both with a Fold the Space insert, and from there we'll take a break and walk into a deluxified game that is nothing to do with a uh, Top Shelf Gamer or inserts. Well, it does have to do with inserts. This is 
uh, from Burnt Island Games and Grand Gamers Guild. This is Endeavor Age of Sail. Now, when I do these videos, sometimes I like talking about games that are not necessarily upgraded by me, but just upgraded versions. They're a deluxe game from Kickstarter. They come with these game trays, which makes the game so much more accessible. Having all your buildings just being able to just reach in and grab a building, just poke down, pull them up, everything you need there. This has everything you need. It's beautiful. It's perfect. It's not without its flaws. So let's talk about some of the flaws and the things I like about this. First of all, if you haven't played Endeavor Age of Sail, well then, join me, because I haven't played in the past year. It's a really good game. I haven't managed to table in a while. It's really an abstract game when you think about it. It's an interesting experience. We have these little player boxes where you can just grab your various player tokens, the specific colors. So those all make, again, setup is quick, accessible, teardown's easy, all that stuff. Much better than player bags than just plastic bags, which is what I usually go with. In fact, if you watch my recent video, I did a recent video on board game reboxings, where I just show how I rebox things, which is usually getting rid of the inserts. Which is something I should do here, but won't, and I'll get into that. Now, I will note, these boards are bowed. This was a problem with the Kickstarter edition of the game. Uh, well, I don't know if it's a problem with the retail. I don't think the retail had double layered. But these very much did bow, unfortunately. It doesn't really detract from the experience once I'm playing. But when I'm looking at them like this, it definitely is a bit of a downer in terms of getting those. Then we have all the various upgrades and modules. Now... Here's what I'm interested in your opinion. First of all, I need to sleeve these cards. What is it? Every once in a while, I pull open a game that I like or love, and then I realize I haven't sleeved some of these things, which is really a shame. I don't know what's going on and why these cards aren't sleeved. My rule is I sleeve cards that I sleeve cards of games I like. Now we do have the upgraded wooden tokens for this over here. So basically you have these cardboard tokens or you have upgraded wooden tokens in order to use those. I have those, they're much, much nicer, much better. And then I have all the various upgraded bits they have in terms of all these tokens. We have the ships, the cannons, the, the keys, the crown, all these different things that came in the upgraded version of Endeavor. And of course the main thing, which main thing for me, is the insert. For me, I've talked about this before, if you watch my Kickstarter videos, my Should You Back, it's my two Back or Not to Back Monday video, then you already know that one of the things I really ridiculously value is accessibility. The easier a game is to set up, to tear down, to table, to store, the more likely it will get played, the more frequently it will get played. And so I'm a huge fan of those things, just being able to, knowing that I can just dive into a game without having to like get through the setup process, it just adds so much to the experience because, well, I actually have the experience. I actually will play the game. Now again, the two complaints I have here are going to be, one is you already saw, which is the player boards. The second complaint you haven't really seen, and it's an interesting one, primarily because it defies the way I normally handle all my game collection, and the way I usually store things or combine things or all of that. And that is, let's put this on top of here, that's going to be the Age of Endeavor expansion. If you look at the Age of Endeavor expansion, Endeavor, or sorry, Endeavor, the Age of Expansion, that's what it's called, the Age of Expansion, this is an entirely another tray expansion stuff that gives you more buildings, all in its other own game tray, with we have the Deluxify tokens, we have all that, we have a separate game tray for this, which basically means that I can't store it properly in the main box without in some way giving something up that I don't want to give up. They, the, the biggest complaint I have is the Game trays are nice enough. Normally when I have an expansion box, I just toss everything and we're good to go. But I like all the stuff that they have. I like all the inserts. I don't want to toss everything. And to make matters worse, this box doesn't even match the same, like, shape. Like, they could have at least made it longer, which would have been a problem. You shouldn't make it longer unnecessarily, but it doesn't even match it on the shelf. It's just this weird, out-of-place expansion box to a game I really like. And it really, really bothers the OCD part of me. So I love, I love, uh, Burnt Island Games in general and Grand Gamers Guild for this one, and really overall a fan of the production quality, not a fan of having a separate non-matching box size expansion. I'll have to figure out a compromise at some point. Maybe I'll stick with only one tray. I, I haven't figured it out. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do. For right now, they're just taking up space on the shelf. I will deal with it. Again, first world problems. Everything going on here is very much first world problems. From there, let's move to Five Tribes or Concordia. Let's do Concordia first, because Concordia is almost eligible for my reboxing videos to begin with. So reboxing videos, it's a new series I started, I've only done one, so it's really a new series, is the idea that I will take a game and a bunch of expansions and show you what and how I have dealt with the, well, management of storage of these. Because I have, I want to say nearly everything for Concordia, well, I can say nearly everything. I want to say everything, I'm not sure if I have everything. I have Concordia, the Venus expansion, I have a whole bunch of maps, I have all of that, and the way I store this, did I just show this in the video? Did I show this in the reboxing video? 
No, I did that with Root. That's why it's confusing. So, we have the Concordia base game and the Venus expansion. Let's show you the Venus expansion first, because this is where I keep all of the maps. Basically, the Venus expansion, and again, if you watched my Root video, you probably already know this, my reboxing video where I show you how I rebox uh, Ankh, the Great Wall, and Root, and how I store all those, then you've probably seen this system before, because it's the same idea. I have two boxes for the game, similar to Root, and then in one box, I simply have all of the expansion maps. All the expansion maps, just one, two, three, four, are all in there. Give me all the maps I need, just separately stored. So I never have to pull this box out if I'm not playing with the expansion stuff. The base game box will have everything. This has the expansion maps. It keeps everything nice and segregated in a way that really works well. Uh, then I have these extra tokens, which will explain why they're there. I haven't figured out what I'm doing with them forever. Basically, here's a problem I have. And again, first world problems, as with everything in this, in this entire video series is I, whenever I upgrade things, so like the copy of Istanbul I have, when I upgraded the, the metal, the, not the metal coin, yeah, metal coins, and I upgraded the cardboard coins to metal coins, I did what any rational human being should do, which includes us, we just don't do it, but I did what I, is very hard to do, which I threw out the old coins. I don't like doing that when the components I'm replacing are nice. I've had this problem with a few games. When I actually have nice shaped pieces and I can throw them out, but like I upgraded them. So I've upgraded the pieces of Concordia. Over here, we're gonna have a folded space plastic insert, plastic foam insert. We're gonna have a folded space insert. We will have upgraded coins, metal coins, and we'll also have upgraded realistic resources, which are my favorite line from, from Top Shelf Gamer. My favorite line they have is the realistic resources. So here you can see the folded space insert. You can see the cards. These go nicely on top of over there. So that's where the player colors are. So at a glance, you can immediately just reach in and pull out your player colors. Those are all instantly available. From there, this particular insert is a tricky one because of the way it comes apart, where it, it stores here. I'll show you over here on the top camera. It stores nicely in the box, but it doesn't really, it kind of is built in two separate pieces, but it stores together. The good news is I never actually take this one out of the box. Usually this is for setup stuff. I just grab the things from the box directly, but it has this weird state where if I'm going to slide them together, when you slide it together, it builds the compartments you need. But until then, it doesn't. So it's a weird semi-mid-game state. But again, I don't take it out of the box. I leave it as is there, and that's fine. I just grab those out. You can slide out a bit to grab the cards out, put it back together. All works fine. From there, we have the various trays. So we have the coin tray, which has all the coins over here. We'll go through that shortly. We have the tray for all the buildings over here. We're not going to bother taking those out. And then we have the realistic resources, which again, I've had to combine. This goes back to the first world problems kind of situation. We have a folded space insert that is clearly designed for non-realistic resources. And I've had to adjust and pivot the way I store them in order to accommodate all these. Like these tokens over here all slide in, well, perfectly. So I'll show you what we have. Again, we have the various token trays over here, the various player tokens. Those will be nicely covered by the various specific. I should actually probably match them up. Let's match up yellow, blue, and green on this side. So we just cover that there. The way they did this is, again, I'm always impressed with whoever designs these inserts, making them fit perfectly. Although, of course, it's probably a nightmare when you have the expansion come out and I have to change things. We have the coins. These coins, I don't actually remember where these coins are from. So these, I don't know if Top Shelf Gamer has these. I don't know if they came with the game. I traded for this game a long time ago. And metal coins for Concordia are a common thing. But these are some of the nicest, chunkiest coins I have in my collection. So we have these over here, over there, just... They're all just solid heft. Just these things are just chunky and, and I like them. I like them. The designs are nice. Let's go ahead and show you some on camera. Let's show you some designs of these. We have this one here and then we can turn it to the other side and that. And then we have this one over here. And again, we can turn it to the other side and that. And then finally, the last one is the smallest one over here. And we can turn it to the other side. Ah, falling. And we have that. So that's, those are the coin options. The thickness varies by type over there. So you can see the various thicknesses of each one. It gets progressively thicker as you go through the higher currencies. But overall, yeah, these are some solid, solid coins. Really recommend them. They'll overall improve and deluxify your experience. Now, what I'm up to next is the, are the, not is the, are the upgraded resources. So we have a few things. We have the silk, because Concordia has silk. These are little bundles of silk from the realistic resources line. You can see these over here. Then we have the salt, the salt tokens, little bags of salt to replace the salt you'll have in, which is the uh, the expansion that has the salt, whatever it is. It's not the main, it's not Venus. I don't think it's Venus. It's, uh, there's a, there's a salt expansion. What is it called again? It's called Concordia, Concordia, 
Concordia, nope, not that one, not that one. Salsa, is it called Salsa? Concordia Salsa, is that what it's called? Concordia Salsa, that's the one. That's the one. I don't think I've actually played with that expansion yet. Then over here, we have the various Deluxe Fight resources. We have Brick. We have the metal pieces, and these are all brick and metal. These are like real heft to them. Then we have the grain tokens, and then finally the wine, the grapes. So those are the deluxe resources you have, upgrading the various tokens you otherwise have. Again, I've said this before, the realistic line of resources from Top Shelf Gamer is my favorite thing that they make, because no one else does anything quite to the same quality, with the exception of the occasional Kickstarter campaigns where you get real deluxified resources in those campaigns. Let's put these in over here. Put that there, there. And again, you can see how quickly these things set up and tear down, giving you all the information you need. This door is nicely on top, so I keep one board there on top. That keeps everything there. Again, I'm not confident enough to store this box on its side. This box get lays, gets laid down flat exactly the way you're seeing it over here. And that brings us to one more game. We have one more game, which is Five Tribes. Now, Five Tribes I debated not showing in this video because I believe I have one more upgrade coming for it, which will be in a future video. That said, I'm not certain if that upgrade is coming, so we'll talk about that one if or when it's relevant. Five Tribes, The Jins of Nagala. This is a game that I keep and constantly wrestle with whether I should be getting rid of it. This has full space inserts. It has metal coins. Even though you see the original coins here, I could still store them, so I've kept both. But let's go through what's in this particular box. Five tribes is a game. I frequently wrestle with whether I can get rid of it or not. We have the player tokens. Let's take these trays out over here. And again, you can just pull them up by the middle if you properly glue them. And one more tray for player tokens, as well as those little purple guys. can't remember what they're called. Two different trays for these, actually. Uh, then we have the various castles and palm trees these are already deluxified by the way this is classic uh, days of wonder their quality always was above like the quality was always amazing before it's cool to have upgraded games they used to be the the uh picture so to speak or the they were synonymous with quality in games we have the various token trays for the not token trays the tile trays i've broken them up in the expansion i haven't played with and the expansions i have played with that's how i have these divided right now theoretically you'd actually probably evenly distribute them but it happens to be that the sizing of it works out perfectly that i can do what i just said expansions i have played and haven't played we have the cat the mountain pieces as well as these from the expansion that's going to be from the the artisans in the gala i believe it is we have the genie cards all locked up nicely in this little insert there showing you all these genies i'm showing you the backs of them these are the genies. These are part of the heart of the game. Unlocking these genies, gathering these to utilize their abilities. Uh, this game is a Mancala style game. You're, you're basically dropping off meeples along a board, a board that's created by laying out patterns of these tiles and then trying to figure out, well, I'm going to move from here to here and I'll move from there and I'm going to pick up four meeples here and go one. Let's put this down here. I'm going to pick up four meeples from here and go one, two, three, four, and I'll activate the ability and the, the, the various meeples on that zone. It's a fun little puzzle. I really enjoy it. I don't play it as often as I used to, but I really like it. I, it's just a shame. It's a shame that I don't play as often as I used to. Over here, we have a bag full of the meeples. Let's put this back here. Over here, we have two different coin trays, which I will probably put my metal coins in there at some point. I haven't bothered to do so yet. Right now, I still kept the original coins. Those coins are victory points. In the game itself, the coins are victory points. We have all the meeples. These are just standard meeples. They go in the bag. They come out of the bag. They get, you put them on the board for setup. Then you distribute them around the board as you mancala your way towards victory. And then we have the metal coins, which again, these are, I believe, the Top Shelf Gamer as well. So the fold of space I got from Top Shelf Gamer, and these coins I got from Top Shelf Gamer. These are Arabian Nights style coins. Let's show you some of these. So first of all, let's do a typical hand pour. I typically like doing those. Just all of that over there. And that's, those are those. And then once again, let's show you the three different types here. Or are there two different types? Why do I feel like there's three types, but I only see two? I thought there were three. Here we go. They were all stuck in the bottom. That was fun. That was very, very coincidentally unlucky. So let's show you these, these, these types of coins over here. We have this one over here. And it clearly has an Arabian Nights feel to it. Now, it does come in three different currencies. And the actual Five Tribes game only really has two. So you, you have to figure out what the currencies you want to use are. I assume I'd go with one, three, and five. It doesn't really print on them, so you can just define it how you want. But one, three, and five is standard, or one, five, ten. The truth is, since five tribes comes with one, five, one, and five already, then going with one, five, ten might make more sense. I haven't really decided yet. I actually haven't played five tribes since I got these coins, so that's a decision I'll make when it comes down to it. But overall, that's the main way I've upgraded the game so far. And you might ask, well, Alex, what else have you done to upgrade the game that's coming? And the answer is going to be uh, basically an answer to what the entire next episode of this game is. 
uh, what this series is. The next episode I have of the, the Deluxifying Your Game, whatever it is, this particular monthly series, is going to be about stickers. That's what it is. Uh, the last video I did where I had Tiny Towns, I had somebody reach out and say, hey, some person just in the comments said, hey, you should really look into stickers for these games. Like, there's some solid stickers out there for Tiny Towns. And I didn't really know much about board game stickers. I haven't really looked into them. And I did look into them. And now I want stickers for all my games. So I I will have, for this next episode, in a month, stay tuned. You can always look them up now. You can just Google board game stickers. You'll find a bunch of things. But in a month, when I do this video next time, I will be covering a whole bunch of stickers for a variety of games, likely including five tribes. We shall see. We'll go through that. That is that that that's basically it. That's another board game upgrades video in the wraps. This one I specifically, I probably should have told you the focus at the beginning, telling you that the end is a little bit of a waste. My focus this time was specifically covering a whole bunch of Euro games with inserts and extras that have been added. So if you think it through, every single one of these is a Euro game with inserts and extras. Uh, that was specifically the, the theme I was going for with this episode. As far as quick notes on these games, Five Tribes is my favorite Days of Wonder game. It has outlasted every single other Days of Wonder game that I've gotten rid of slowly over the years. I really enjoy this one when I table it. I haven't tabled it in a while. I find it falls into that Gateway Plus category. So it's not something that comes out with my regular group. It's something that's a little heavier than what I, what I play with my kids. But it it's one that when I do have the right group opportunity or just the time slot for it, I really enjoy it. And it's not going anywhere yet. Uh, from there we have Lahav. Lahav is one that I don't play as often as I should, like many games in my collection, especially heavier Euros. It can be a really long experience, even at two players, because it's a game that can run two and a half, three hours. But I really, really like it. It's an economic engine of turning all your goods into other goods, of trying to convert your clay into, the, clay into this, and then bake your bread and sell your cattle, and doing all these things as you turn resources into other resources, all while unlocking different buildings, buildings that will be the core of the game. You'll have special buildings, especially if you have the La Grande, La Grande expansion, whatever it's called. Then you add even more special buildings that will mix up your experience. Really like it. I should probably review it at some point. I, I need to play it again. It's been it's been far too long. Istanbul is one that does hit the table. I find that it very the playtime it gives, roughly 45 minutes to an hour, for the amount you get out of that playtime, it is consistently one that I play again and again and again. It's also one that I got rid of when I first played it. There are a handful of games in my collection, probably around 5, maybe 10, that fall into the category of games that I got rid of them and then had second thoughts, got them back, and they stuck. More often than not, when I have second thoughts, I find that my initial impressions were right. When I try a game again, I'm like, you know what, I, pl I liked Scythe, but I didn't love it, and I play it again. I'm like, no, I still like Scythe and don't love it. There are a handful of games that have been the exception. Games I got back, and now they are staples in my collection, and Istanbul is one of them. I don't know if or when this would ever leave. I mean, any game is not necessarily safe. I just did a video recently on top 10 games that will never leave my collection, and even those 10, I say very clearly, there's no guarantees in life. Istanbul, though, I really enjoy it. I hope to continue playing this one. Endeavor Age of Sail is actually likely the least safe here. I really enjoy Endeavor Age of Sail. I find that the puzzle of placing out your pieces to score the connection points while trying to be mindful of use, utilizing and caching your abilities and the way you upgrade your buildings, it's a reprint of the original Endeavor. This is the reprint from Burnt Island Games and Grand Gamers Guild. Deluxifies the components and adds a bunch of expansion modules. My problem with it, and the reason I'm not certain it's safe, is the base game of Endeavor isn't variable enough to compare to continuously stand with multiple plays, at least in my opinion. It's a really solid engine, but I find it falls into the same pattern of doing the same thing. And then the modules they add, they add all these different modules you can move into the expansion, you can move into and integrate with, but I find that they don't, they're a little fiddly. I find the expansion models are fiddly and I don't love playing with them. I haven't tried all of them, but the ones I have tried, I have found that they add to the strategy, but at the cost of like having to explain a whole new thing that doesn't like seamlessly integrate. Now I have not played with the Endeavor Age of Expansion. I definitely have to play with that before I make any decisions. For right now, Endeavor is definitely safe. I don't upgrade, well technically I didn't upgrade this one. This is actually the one on the table I didn't upgrade, but it, it is safe for now. I do wonder how long that goes. And then Concordia is just an amazing game. Concordia is an incredible Euro experience, all about building up different things. You want to build this up in that order, and you want to build that up in that order. It's from Mac, Max Gertz, who has some amazing games like Na Navigator. He has um, Antique Duellum. He has an Imperial, uh, a whole bunch of games that are really, really solid. I really enjoy Concordia. It's probably my favorite game from him. And I'm saying that as someone who likes a lot of his games. I, I probably should get rid of some of them, though, because I, I play Concordia more than the others. Overall, really enjoy it. I have far more expansions than I have actually played with. I haven't played with all those boards. I haven't played with Venus. I haven't even played the Salsa. I have played the base game, and I've played with some of the expansion maps. I need to play it more, but I really, really enjoy that one. I'm looking forward to it. They just announced a solo and two-player version of the game. So I'm looking forward to that one. Maybe I'll play it more. I, I think I like it. 
three and four and five players though, so I'm not certain. That's a quick overview of these games. Side point to the fact that I've deluxified them. That's basically it. Until next time, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Once again, a reminder, there is a coupon code of some sort and links down below to Top Shelf Gamer if you're interested in any of these things or in general upgrading your game. But I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, have a good one.